Hi everyone, welcome back to the Lost Mandy channel. GeminiTelescope.net is possibly the most valuable application for your Lost Mandy mount. And yes, often one of the most misunderstood and underused applications out there. We get questions like, how come I can't quit the application? Why does it not launch and tell me it's already running? Can I connect multiple applications to it? And how do I use it in general? So we're gonna cover all these and more in this video. First, let me point out, we don't cover every possible feature and description of this application because they are covered in videos elsewhere in our channel. For example, there are starter questions that are often like, what is the latest version? Where do I get it? How do I install it? And how do I configure it to connect to my Gemini controller? We have a dedicated video specifically on this topic, and I'm gonna put a link here as well as in the description below. In this video, we're gonna cover the most important features of the Gemini.net application, but we're not gonna cover everything. Why is that? Well, because a lot of the features that you're gonna use are also replicated in the hand controller, and that's probably where you're gonna do most of your setup work. In addition, there's a complete user manual available in your application. We're gonna go under setup and help, and you'll see that there is a complete user manual. It's quite long and it's quite detailed and it's going to tell you everything you need to know about every feature. So we're just not going to cover everything here. One last thing before we get started. We start with the assumption that you already have GeminiTelescope.net installed and configured correctly and it is connected to your Lost Mandy Gemini 2. If you haven't already done that, go ahead and check out the other videos, get everything installed and up and running, and then come back and join us. Okay, so let's jump into it. We're gonna minimize our Stellarium Planetarium application. And let's get start talking about the application. First of all, it is a Windows only application. This is because it's written in the .NET framework and it uses ASCOM, which is a Windows only system for communicating telescopes, mounts, and different pieces with each other. When you install it, you'll have this uh, icon and we'll just go ahead and double click it. And this brings up the soft controller and the basic application. The first thing I want to point out is that when you start this application, it actually runs and continues to run in the background. So in addition to this soft controller you have here, in the lower right corner, in the icon area, you'll see that there's also a GeminiTelescope.net uh, little icon there. And when you hover your mouse over it, you'll see that a Gemini status window pops up. So we can go ahead and pin this if we want, just so we can watch what's going on. And this gives us the status of the connection, the Gemini version, some other things that are going on with the mount. So if I close this application, and I'm actually going to unpin this, we're gonna close this, it would appear that the Gemini application is quit, but that is not the case, right? It is still actually running in the background and you can see it here. So when we double click on it, again, we'll bring up our soft controller. Now, sometimes when you double click on it uh, once, it'll bring up just the Gemini status and then you can double click on it again and it will bring up the soft controller. Uh, double clicking on it a third time will actually hide the controller so you can kind of toggle that. But this is uh, the application always running in the background until you specifically exit it. And there's two ways to do that. One is that you can choose from the setup menu, exit, or you can go from the uh, icon tray and right click on that and choose the same option here. That's This is the same menu you see in the setup menu. So when we exit that, then you can see of course that it's no longer running. So I'm gonna go back and relaunch the application now. So just to show you an example of, of how this might be a little confusing, if I close this out and it appears that the application is not running and I try to launch it again by double clicking it, it will say that there's another instance of Gemini telescope.net already running. So in order to get back to the application, again, just go down to the icon tray. You'll have the Gemini telescope.net icon there. The little status will pop up. Just go ahead and double click that. It'll bring up the status and double click on it again and it'll bring up the Gemini. And again, sometimes it might be a single double click or it will alternatively hide and show the uh, application here, but that's how you bring it back up. One of the main functions of the Gemini Telescope.net application is the ASCOM driver. This is the software that allows multiple applications such as your imaging application or your planetarium application to connect to and control your Lost Mandy mount. So we can go in here under setup 
and we can configure the telescope. This is configuring how you actually connect to your Gemini uh, controller on your mount. We're not gonna go through these details because again, they're handled elsewhere, but you'll notice we can also configure other options like the boot mode, choose a site. You can't actually uh, configure a site, but you can choose a site from in here. You can specify some of your optics information such as focal length and so forth. And when we go ahead and click the connect button, this will actually connect the ASCOM driver with a mount. And you can see this down here in my Gemini status. It will tell me the Gemini version of the firmware it's running. It will tell me the tracking rate, which right now is sidereal, some information about the time zone, the local time and so forth. So as an example, we can bring up an application like Sequence Generator Pro here. We can choose the Gemini Telescope.net uh, configuration for the mount. And when we press the connect button, you can see that it's connected and it's using the Gemini Telescope.net application. So for example, how do we know this? If I click the disconnect button, it will say, hey, something is connected. Do you really want to quit out of this? And of course, at this point, you probably don't. So this is how applications running on Windows can connect to and control the mount. An important and related function to being the ASCOM connection is that Gemini Telescope.net also serves as an ASCOM hub, which means that multiple applications can connect to the Gemini mount at the same time. So while we have the uh, Sequence Generator Pro already connected, we're gonna go ahead and open up uh, Stellarium, which can also connect to the mount. So I'm gonna go here under the configuration window and under the plugins, and we have a telescope control here. And when we connect it, we can see here that it will actually bring the pointing position of the Lost Mandy, in this case a G11, into my Planetarium application. So both Stellarium and Sequence Generator Pro are sharing a connection to the mount at the same time. And that's what we mean by being an ASCOM hub. Now here I've rearranged some windows so you can see everything is running at one time. We have Stellarium running uh, and connected to the mount. It's showing my pointing position there. We have Sequence Generator running. It's connected to the mount, obviously, via the telescope connection using Gemini Telescope.net. Here's our telescope pointing position, which reflects kind of where it is on the Stellarium. And then of course, here's the application itself. Now, normally you don't actually launch the application standalone. So let me go ahead and just kind of dis, uh, I'm gonna disconnect everything. So we're gonna go under here. We're gonna go under telescope control again, disconnect. And we're gonna close that out. And we're gonna put that back and we're gonna disconnect from here. And we are also going to, uh, well, when the last connection uh, disconnects, then the Gemini Telescope.net driver itself disconnects. And of course you can click the connect button here. Normally you don't actually launch the Gemini Telescope.net application standalone. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit this. So usually what you'll do is you'll bring up an application like your imaging app, like Sequence Generator Pro here. We'll go ahead and click this button to connect uh, the Gemini Telescope.net. And what it does is it launches a version of that in the background and then connects to it. So you haven't seen anything happen, right? But uh, down here in our tray, you can see that uh, Gemini Telescope.net is running. We have the status here. And if I double click this, it's gonna bring back up my Gemini uh, soft uh, controller. So this is the most typical way that the Gemini Telescope.net application is invoked by connecting through an ASCOM driver from an imaging application or a planetarium application or something else. And of course, at this point, again, if we try to double click this and launch another instance, it will say, hey, we already have it running. Uh, you just gotta close the original one first, but probably more importantly, you know, and again, it will look something like this. We'll get rid of those. It will just go down here and you just double click this and you'll be able to bring it up again. The second important area of functionality is as a soft controller for your mount. So you can see here, we have the Gemini telescope.net soft controller here. And these buttons mirror the buttons that you would find on your physical hand controller for your Gemini. So I have uh, now Stellarium connected. You can see this is my pointing position for the Gemini. This is just for illustration purposes, uh, but it is connected through the ASCOM driver portion of Gemini telescope.net. 
And here in the speed controls, I have guide speed, uh, uh, well, guide speed, uh, centering speed, and then we're going to change it to slew speed just to demonstrate how to move the telescope around. So I can click and hold on these um, position buttons, and you can see that the uh, mount position is actually updating here inside of Stellarium. So this is one way that you can actually go about uh, using the GeminiTelescope.net to actually change your pointing position. There are additional functionalities built into the GeminiTelescope.net application that allow you to control the position of the telescope, including uh, going to specific coordinates or objects. So for example, we can type in M31 and choose that and it will enter the RA and declination coordinates. We can click go to and the mount will actually slew to the coordinates of uh, the Andromeda galaxy. In addition to the go to functionality built into GeminiTelescope.net, we also have various park features and this is to manage your parking of the mount. I'll point out that in addition to parking the mount in its current location, you can park it at the startup position, which is counterweight down. You can park it at a custom home position uh, or other, a couple other different places. But the important option here that I want to point out is you can configure the park position. And this is important when you're doing automation. So typically, if you have an imaging application and you're doing automation through the night, so it's unattended operation, you're going to want to slew to the counterweight down position before parking. And this is an option that once it's all done and your imaging application says, hey, I want to park the mount, instead of not slewing or slewing to somewhere else, it will slew to the counterweight down position. So that's an important option to set when you're thinking about automation. We can go ahead and actually just park the mount directly from GeminiTelescope.net and I'm going to choose park at startup position and it won't confirm that with me. I'm going to say yes and again we can see this reflected in the positioning in the Stellarium application. Now that we're parked you can see that the status now has changed to park and that tracking has been disabled or unchecked. Now the simple thing that we could do is simply just check the box to start tracking again and it will essentially unpark the mount. Another area of significant functionality built into this application is controlling the advanced settings of the Gemini. So we can find this under the setup menu and we can choose advanced Gemini settings. And these are all the various settings, many of which are actually in your hand controller and you would configure them there, but we can do the controller settings such as mount type. Uh, we can change the tracking rates. Um, there are some advanced features around speed settings, custom mount settings, and so forth. One option I do want to point out here that's important for automation and imaging applications is under the safety limits. So we can click set safety limit and choose set arbitrary safety and go to limits. It'll give us a warning like, hey, do you really know what you're doing here? And we do. But there is an option here under automation settings for nudging the mount out of a safety limit on slew. And we want to enable this if we're doing complete automation all night long. What this does is if for some reason your mount hits the safety limit and stops tracking, on its next go-to, so maybe let's say you had a target and for some reason you didn't quite calculate it correctly and it hit a safety limit and it stopped tracking. Well, we don't want to ruin the rest of the night. So by enabling this option, when your imaging application then goes to try to attempt a go-to to the next target, it will nudge the mount out of the safety limit and be able to slew to the next target. If you don't enable this, the mount is just going to sit there at the safety limit and you're going to wake up in the morning and it's just going to be there. You're going to not have the option of imaging the other targets for your night. So this is a great option to set in the advanced settings here. So that's it. That's a quick tour of the GeminiTelescope.net application on all the various features or at least all the various major feature areas that it brings to you and your Lost Mandy mount. If you have any questions, again, I want to point out that under the setup menu, under help, we have the complete uh, user manual that's available there that can answer some of your questions. And if it's still something that you can't figure out or maybe you think that there's a bug or something, I want to point out that there is the Gemini 
uh, Ascom driver user group, you can see the uh, URL up above here and we'll put it in the description below. But this is another place where you can get in here and ask questions. I wanna give a special shout out to Paul Konevsky and all the folks behind developing and maintaining the Ascom Gemini Telescope driver and application. You can see this information in the about box. They've done a great job of developing this application and maintaining it and keeping up with the Gemini enhancements. If you have any questions or comments about this video or other videos, just leave us a comment below. We'd be happy to respond to it and we'll see you on the next video.